what is Cushing reaction? Cushing reaction is seen in the patients who have rising intracranial pressure. Cushing reaction is seen in the patient who are having rising intracranial pressure. Uh, let's suppose there is a person who has intracranial tumor or mass lien. If that tumor or mass lien is expanding, then pressure in the cranial cavity become very high. And when pressure in the cranial cavity become very high, then cerebral vessels, cerebral circulation is impaired because cerebral vasculature is compressed with high pressure. Again, a person develops a mass occupying, space occupying lien in the central nervous system. As this lien keep on expanding, then pressure in the cranial cavity become very high. And when there is raised intracranial pressure, what is there? Raised intracranial pressure. When there is raised intracranial pressure, that will lead to compression of circulation in central nervous system and oxygen will not be reaching the central nervous system and carbon dioxide will be accumulated in central nervous system. Am I clear? Or you want me to draw a proper diagram? Okay, I will draw a diagram for you to explain this thing. Look, here is the person and this unfortunate person develops a very big tumor. If he is developing very big tumor, then it means the space occupying lien. And this space occupying lien is leading to raised intracranial pressure because cranial cavity is a closed surface area. So when tumor is growing into that, pressure in the cranial cavity become very high. When pressure in the cranial cavity become very high, do you think then cerebral vessels can perfuse the central nervous system well? Can blood flow can be maintained in such a high pressure system? No. So that will lead to reduced cerebral blood flow or blood flow is reduced to the all central nervous system. When blood flow is reduced in central nervous system, that will lead to accumulation of carbon dioxide. The partial pressure of carbon dioxide increases in the central nervous system. This carbon dioxide will fuse with the water in the central nervous system and of course carbon dioxide plus water will make H2CO3. You know carbon dioxide, rising carbon dioxide fuse with the water, they convert into H2CO3 and that releases bicarb and protons. This protons which are generated within the central nervous system due to high level of partial pressure of carbon dioxide, they stimulate the central chemo receptors. These are the central chemo receptors and these are stimulated by the rising proton concentration. Right? These chemo receptors will lead to powerful increase in vagal output, vagal output plus at the same time they will increase, there will be intense increase in sympathetic output. Sympa Thetic output. Now look, what really happened to this person? The space occupying lien. Of course, he will develop headache. With that, when vagal outflow, parasympathetic and sympathetic, both are simultaneously overstimulated. Normally in the body what happens, if parasympathetic activity is more, sympathetic goes down. Or if sympathetic activity is up, then parasympathetic goes down. This is one condition in which sympathetic and parasympathetic both, both activities are very high. Now, when vagal activity on the heart is very high, then vagal activity has negative chronotropic action on the heart and heart rate goes down. So, there is falling, there is falling pulse rate. Patient has falling pulse rate. At the same time, when sympathetic activity is increased, the cardio stimulation is inhibited by the vagus, but sympathetic stimulation on veno, venous system and arterial system lead to increased blood pressure. So this patient has severe headache due to space occupying lien, plus he has progressively falling pulse rate and progressively rising blood pressure. And severe parasympathetic activity may also produce projectile vomiting. This autonomic disturbance may also produce projectile, very severe vomiting, right? 
and another thing when intracranial pressure become very very high it compresses the retinal veins so blood cannot be drained well from the retina and a retinal blood retinal artery keep on taking the blood to the retina but retinal vein cannot bring the blood out of retina so what really happens that optic disc become swollen and it become edematous and we call it papal edema papal edema let me explain exactly how papal edema occurs when you have raised intracranial pressure when you have raised intracranial pressure then what really happens let's suppose this is your eyeball and here is now this is retinal fibers and this is optic nerve here now what really happens that optic nerve has a dural cover on it and there is a this is the area which is basically having CSF now retinal artery enters into optic nerve and supplies the retina and retinal vein the blood from here drains back and through the retinal vein it comes out now the point which you have to remember that retinal artery and retinal vein both pass through subarachnoid space in which there is CSF this point retinal artery is passing through subarachnoid space here retinal vein is passing through subarachnoid space now what really happens when you have a tumor in the brain right pressure in the central nervous system become pressure in the intracranial cavity become very high and CSF pressure become high if pressure of the CSF is very high CSF will compress the vein but not artery because artery is a high pressure system retinal artery is a high pressure system and retinal vein is a low pressure system so when intracranial pressure is high right CSF pressure also become high then as retinal artery passes through sub subarachnoid space CSF cannot compress the retinal artery but rising pressures of the CSF and intracranial cavity can press the retinal vein so retinal artery keep on supplying the retina but retinal vein cannot drain the retina so edema develops in retina and this edema which develops in retina this become maximum around the optic disc right and margins of the optic disc will be blurred let's suppose here is optic disc right and margins of the optic disc are usually sharp but in this person where edema is developing around the optic disc as venous drainage is impaired so this margins will become blurred and this condition is called papal edema so if a patient has raised intracranial pressure he has developed headache he has rising blood pressure due to sympathetic overflow he has falling pulse rate due to parasympathetic overflow he has projectile vomiting due to autonomic disturbances and he has papal edema because outflow venous system of the retina is compressed